Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. You can drop the name or the link down below, and I'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest. So today, I'm going to be reacting to Dr. Zaki Naik and Oxford Union debate question and answer part 5 of 7. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Dr. Naik, thank you for coming here. We really do appreciate it. And thank you for your complimentary words of this union being a bastion of free speech. With that same principle of free speech in mind, don't you think that I or anyone should therefore have the right to go to a Muslim country and proclaim the Christian gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Brother asked the question, with the same right of freedom of speech, doesn't he have the right to proclaim the Christian Bible in any Muslim country? Brother, as we know today, all the Muslim countries per se do not follow Quran and the Hadith in the true sense. There are many Muslim countries, some may be close to Islam, some may not be close to Islam. Depending upon each country, they may have their own law. So what you have to do, you have to ask that particular country which does not permit you to preach your gospel, what is the reason that they don't want to preach your gospel? Dr. Knight, thank you very much for your talk. The question I have is you profess to be a man of peace. You've spoken very eloquently about the idea of peace in Islam. Peace is written in front of your microphone as you stand there. And I agree with you in, in many senses. But my question is why then is your message still seen as so controversial? Why are there figures within the Islamic world, why are there fellow Islamic clerics who see your message and still believe that you are wrong? Why, uh, you, you've claimed that the Home Secretary has banned you from this country because of a, a sort of media conspiracy, but why is there a broader sense of discontent with your message? The brother asked a very good question, that why if I'm a man of peace and I speak about peace, some people are against me, some Muslim, some non-Muslim, the Home Secretary. Brother, you have to understand that any person who's popular, there are bound to be people who are against him, irrespective whether the popular person is doing good work or bad work. And the best example I can give you, that today, according to Michael H. Hart, he wrote a book saying, the 100 most influential people in the world history. Though he's a Christian, he put number one most influential human being as Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Today, do you know? Though Muslims consider him to be the most important and the most influential person in history, there are many non-Muslims who think the same. But today if we analyze the maximum books written against any human being on the face of the earth, it is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The second person he named in his list was Isaac Newton. But because he's not a common man for common human being, he's a scientist. The third person on his list was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If we analyze today, the second person in human history who has maximum books written against him, it is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Based on this argument, do I have to agree that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, they were not good? What we have to realize, when a person gets popular, there are bound to be people against him. And according to the Home Department of UK, when I had come in the year 2009, I was informed by reliable sources that according to the Home Department of UK, the most popular Islamic satellite channel in the world is Peace TV and the most watched Islamic satellite channel in UK is also Peace TV. Not only is it watched by Muslims, but even watched by non-Muslims. 
the same report said that the most popular Islamic speaker in the world is Dr. Zakir Naik and the most popular Islamic speaker in UK is also Dr. Naik. That's the reason the Home Department was requesting me that can I reach out to those Muslims which the UK government cannot. But now because of the change of government, what I feel it was more of a political move rather than a legal move. And as maybe they wanted someone popular so that they could pass the message that we are tough against Muslims. And that is the reason what we feel that we have more faith in the judicial system rather than the political system. I think it was mainly because of popularity and it was mainly a political move rather than a legal move. And inshallah, God willing, we feel that this exclusion order would be reversed by the Court of Appeal, hopefully. Uh, I've actually reacted to the rest of this, the stuff that follows after this, the rest of the questions that follow after the first two. Um, the first question was actually a very, very good one. I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. How do Muslims feel when they spread their beliefs in other countries? They can hold seminars. They can hold all sorts of meetings to spread their belief because these countries are saying you know what we're democratic people can believe in whatever they want you can preach whatever you want hence you can speak on any religion that you want how do muslims feel when they are granted that right to preach what they preach in other countries that are not arabic countries non-muslim countries whatever country it is you're allowed to preach whatever you believe in whereas or other countries or muslim countries arab countries you limit the freedom of expression of these other people that believe in something else than islam when you look at that does it make sense to you otherwise i'm trying to think how would it be because we live in a very, very different situation. How would it be if these other countries started limiting who speaks on what? Or stopping people from speaking on what religion they believe in? How would that be? Let's look at it from that point of view. Would that please Muslims? How would that honestly be? I don't know. I, I really don't know what to say about that. But... um. I think he gave a fair answer depending on what country you go to ask the government you know that particular government as to why they're stopping you from spreading or talking about whatever religion it is that you believe in also when you're traveling into a country that you're not familiar with it's always important to do your research on their laws rules so that you don't find yourself in trouble or anything that would just um disturb your peace that will make you not enjoy your stay in a country don't go to a country and say you know what i'm american i can wear whatever i want you know what i'm zambian i can speak on whatever i want um study countries the countries that are very very strict they won't even allow you to do what you want to do because it's just their laws the countries that are going to allow you to do whatever you want to do because it's their laws and i really don't know how i sit on this because how can I want one country to be like this, but then I want another country to be like this? Why can't we? Why can't all countries be the same to some extent, you know? But then it's like asking why we don't believe in one religion, or why we don't believe in the same idea of something. That's how the world was created, and then that's that. Let me know what you guys actually think about these two questions that were asked at the beginning of the video. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. If there's something you want me to react to, uh, let me know, and I'll be more than glad to react to it. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.